Gradius, or whatever variation of the pronunciation you believe to be the correct one, is a 1985 shooter developed and published by Konami for the Nintendo Entertainment System. The developers decided to make it a horizontal shooter because they wanted to reuse material from Scramble, a 1981 arcade game also developed by the same company. It was even originally called Scramble 2, but after a process of trial and error within different movement patterns and weapons while developing, a laser was chosen as the featured weapon within the game. When fired, it made the Vic Viper, your ship, look like a sword, or as they say in Latin, Gladius. The incorrect translation was complete and the game had a new name. When gameplay begins, your transdimensional spaceship Vic Viper is pretty slow and only has a low level weapon. This can be altered by collecting and using power-ups as you progress. Instead of being predetermined like other games, the different power-ups in Gradius can be selected by the player. Everything from a speed boost, laser boost, missiles and more can be selected from the power-up menu that appears in the bottom of the screen. The amount of power-ups you've collected will determine which selection is available and when chosen by pressing the B button will return the power-up section menu to its initial state with no more power-ups available. Gradius boasts the honour of being the first time an actual story and ending were included in a shoot 'em up or shump for short. Your planet, Gradius, is under attack by an evil race called the Bacterian. To save them, you have been launched in a prototype spaceship, the Vic Viper, known to our North American viewers as the Warp Rattler. You must pilot through several different stages set throughout various environments, fighting a seemingly endless horde of enemies and bosses along your way to destroy the core. These bosses, while different in their own way, have similar attack patterns and the end goal is usually the same, shoot everything that moves until it's dead. Some cores are protected by destructible walls, which will be broken down by your constant barrage of shots. As you progress, bosses can even regenerate them, but when a core's destruction is close, they will change colour. As each of a boss's cores are rendered useless, it becomes less able to defend itself, and eventually it culminates in an extremely gratifying explosion. Although pretty much all the backgrounds are in identical black with a few stars, the rest of the graphics are a triumph for the time. Futuristic enemies that look different in a host of alternating stages look glorious. There is some slowdown when a lot of the action is happening on screen, but overall across the seven levels packed with a different musical theme for each, it truly is a wonderful sight. Gradius is considered the grandfather of side-scrolling space shooters and is loved by many, but if you're not a seasoned chump player, it's damn hard. At any time, there can be up to a dozen individual danger zones on screen. By this, I mean areas on screen where you'll die instantly and the game will make you start again without any of those glorious power-ups you just busted your gut unlocking. Sometimes even putting you directly back to the start of your most recent level. As you play, you'll learn patterns and improve, but sometimes, sometimes it'll seem impossible. One of the game's creators, Kazuhisho Hatamoto, had this very problem. Try as he might, he just couldn't progress in the game. He watched his ship being destroyed over and over again while testing and finally had enough. As he was a programmer and one of the game's creators, he decided to create a code. A simple set of button pushes to give himself a full complement of power-ups in the game. It worked. He could finally play more of the game by entering the now famous code of up up, down down, left right, left right, BA when the game was paused. What Hashimoto forgot was to remove it before the game was released. That's right, that now famous string that all old school retro gamers should know by heart was an accident. It wasn't supposed to be left in the game. When Konami found out, they embraced it, using it in several of their subsequent releases from Contra to Castlevania, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to Batman Returns and more. It even appears as an easter egg in dozens of other developers' games. In Quake 4, it completed all your objectives. In Tony Hawk 2, you could use it to unlock Spider-Man. And it even gave you unlimited ammo in Resident Evil 2. Several websites have used it in the past also, with ESPN famously using it to make rainbow unicorns appear all over their homepage. So whether you use it or you don't, and regardless of it being an error, we can all sincerely thank Hashimoto for a code that has become a treasure of retro gaming history. <laughs>